New Year's Eve Ghost Stories, Part 3 of 8, and Between Master and Disciples, given in English on December 31st, 2020. The young man did exactly what the dervish priest told him and then waited until the oven was hot as possible and then his wife bent down to put the pastry in to bake the cake then he suddenly got hold of her and threw her inside quickly. You know, the old, the old ovens, they are big, yeah? You know, very, very big, yeah, and then they can put something on top to cook and to, to bake and everything like that. They can bake underneath and cook on top. On top there's a hole also, yeah, you know, right? If you don't know, and then you can look at to some of the Indians, when they bake chapatis with a big, big uh, oven for the public, in some of the ashrams, they have to make very big ovens like that. And many, 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 uh, many of them, so that they can uh, bake chapati, many chapati at the same time. See what I'm saying? Yes. Because in Indian, when there's a festival or something, many followers come, uh, maybe uh, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, they have to fit them. You got that? Yes. Yes, sir. You know, like the big, very big oven, and on top of that, they would put a very big kind of wok, upside down, yeah? And then the woman will prepare the, the chapati pass and then just put them, you know, <laughs> lay, laying them on top of these uh, hot doom shaped like uh, woks, and then cook the chapatis, you know, cooking like hundreds <laughs> at one time. Yeah, oh my God, uh, Indian people are really something. <laughs> you know, when whenever there's a festival, they're very religious. They come hundreds of thousands, at least tens of thousands, and they can fit them all. <laughs> wow. Very simple. <laughs> Yeah, maybe they just make curry and eat with the chapatis, just like that. And that's nutritious enough already, because the chapatis, they always use in a whole meal, a whole meal wheat flour. They don't use that white flour, stuff like that. And in the curry, there are many ingredients in it. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. So there's enough nutrition. Yeah, vegetables and protein stuff like peas and beans, uh, potatoes, yeah, carrots, and other vegetables they mix together. It's nutritious enough, curry and chapati. And then people just sit on the floor, yeah, uh, in uh, different, many rows like that, and they just come, one puts the chapati, the other one just pour on the curry. Yeah, that's very organized and very simple, very quick, and people are happy, yeah, to eat in the house of the master. <laughs> Uh, you hungry? <laughs> <laughs> you want some chapati? <laughs> Sounds good, eh? Yes, yes, yes. Don't have. <laughs> I would cook for you if I was with you. Yeah, I would. I would be happy, glad to do that. Thank you, Master. To serve you. Mm, a good, good uh, saints, good boys, good girls, good saints. Despite your personality or your problems, you are still the saints. Thank you, Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Yeah, only saintly people can do the job that you're doing. It looks easy for you because that's the, that's your mission. <laughs> you like to do it, okay? Not everybody can, even though it looks easy for you. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, of course, we, we have hard work sometimes, but for you it doesn't seem like an obligation or something difficult. Yeah? You just do it because you want to. Yes, Master. So now, uh, yeah, in, when I was a so-called disciple, I, every day I cleaned the yard and I wiped the steps, yeah, the staircase, and was feeling very happy that I'm cleaning the steps, the footsteps of the saints, yeah, cleaning the dirt from the foot of the saints. I was very happy to do that. In any ashram, if I have a chance to work, I always feel very happy feel privileged and feel lucky, feel there's something inside that's not not obligation, 
feel very, very, uh, how you say, very willing. Mm. Do it with love, you know, <laughs> and with appreciation. Yes. Now we go to India. <laughs> uh, this is uh, from Egypt, and we go. We went all the way to India, and now we come back to you. <laughs> uh, right, and that's that. He cover, he sealed the the door. Yeah. So the next morning, the uh, devils came. The devils came back to his house. And then they opened the oven, yeah? And inside they found uh, a wreath of flowers. Like those that you give when people die, yeah? Like a funeral wreath of flowers, yeah? yeah? Inside. But it's all in gold. It's all in gold. Yeah. So the uh, devils uh, picked up this uh, wreath of flowers and then from from that wreath of flowers, Drop down one, one flower, yeah, and that used to be the little finger of the beautiful girl, yeah, the snake. When she's a beautiful girl, that was her little finger. So the devils pick that flower and give it to the the man for souvenir. <laughs> I don't know if he wants to remember that, but <laughs> probably that's what she wants to give to him. And then the devils left. He took the the rest of the flowers with him. That's it. That's the end of the story. <laughs> this story is supposed to come from the uh, the Jewish uh, community in Afghanistan, according to the books footnotes. So it's not all from Jerusalem, yeah. Okay, it's not because the Jewish people they did not have a country before, yeah. They are all over the planet. Anyway, the story is finished. So, um, any questions? <laughs> any questions? No, no, master. no, master. no okay. Uh, actually, in many countries, they liken the woman to the snake or the tiger, you know? <laughs> because women are too dangerous for men. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm thinking the opposite, yeah? Uh, look at the men, they don't have to do makeup or anything, and the, wom the woman always gaga over them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and the woman has to wear high heels, put makeup on, uh, dye the hair like me, and still nobody is here. <laughs> still no men around. <laughs> I wonder what else do I have to do? <laughs> yeah. In Vietnam, we call women the, the beauty... I find that thing, I don't know, it's like... Huh? Okay, the beauty... Uh, beauty race, you know? Like men is another race, and we are the beauty race. Uh, yeah, mm. <laughs> they call us uh, in good fight that, fight that. Yeah, uh, but we never feel that we're beautiful enough. Yeah, so women spend a lot, a lot of money on everything to make themselves look better or more confident. <laughs> well, except you guys. I'm glad you don't have to do it. I do it all for you. <laughs> 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 Thanks to the camera. Yeah, and my job. Anyway, in uh, some of the Vietnamese uh, uh, books, they also tell many stories about snakes and stuff like that. And also the snakes as women, as beautiful, charming women, went into our folklore, into our theater, our poetry and literature, you know, stories, many things. So we women are famous, no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No matter what we call us, snakes or tigers, whatever, yeah? Uh, men still like women a lot, no matter what, snake or not. <laughs> because uh, uh, in one of the stories I read before, the, the man doesn't want to, to listen to the monk, you know, and kill the snake. And he said his philosophy is that many humans are even more poisonous than snakes. Wow. Yeah. Therefore, I love her. 
I don't care if she's a snake or not. But somehow the priest, I remember, forced himself to intervene in their relationship and kidnapped the snake, took her away and imprisoned her somewhere else. Yeah. In that story, uh, the man wasn't sick, but the monk passing by saw in that, in his aura, you know, there is some kind of uh, evil, he says, some, some evil and dark energy around him. That's why he wanted to kill the snake, to take the snake away. Yeah, and the man was crying, saying, many humans are more poisonous than snakes. Yeah. That's his philosophy. I also agree. I agree. I agree. But if you love somebody so much, yeah, you can just die for her or him. That's okay. <laughs> Your choice. And there was a the joke, I remember, I told you a long time ago. There was one master and a small disciple, young disciple, living in the mountains. They hardly ever went down to town or anywhere. So one day, one day, the master took the young boy disciple with him to town, and he pointed to some woman and said, these are tigers, don't look at them, don't go near them, don't think of them. Okay, good. And then after they finished the whatever they had to do, they came back to the mountain. Huh? <laughs> and the master asked the young boy, disciple, so, did you like the town? He said, yeah, I liked it very much. What did you like the best over there? He said, the tigers. <laughs> 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 so we women are tigers and snakes <laughs> and beloved ones. <laughs> So congratulations to you, huh, guys? Behave yourself. <laughs> Don't bite. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Do you want another ghost story, or do you want some Jewish story? Ghost, ghost, story. ghost story. Another ghost story? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, you're not please. scared? No. All right, ghost story. Tonight is a ghost night, huh? Luckily, I have another one that I told you before. That story, okay, huh? Yes, Mr. Yes, the man with two wives, yeah? Yes. Thank okay, you. like this. In the city of Bosnan, uh, somewhere in the world, have a look, see if any footnote here. Bosnan, where? No. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, that's in Poland. Uh, on the bank of water in the midwest of Poland, yeah? one of the oldest cities. These are one of the oldest cities in our world. Okay, there in the Poznan, in Poland, there was a man who had a very big house, rich, and uh, his house was built on the side of the street. There was a very big, big basement under the house. But uh, the door to the steps, the staircase to go down to the basement was always locked. One time, uh, there was one young man, he went down there, he, he had the keys in his hand, and he wanted to open the staircase door. But before he opened it, people found him dead oh. over there, and, you know, in front of that door. The police came and investigated, but uh, they could not uh, find out what happened and why the, the, the young boy died. During the two years from that day, uh, many weird things happened in the house, and uh, all the bad luck keeps coming. All the food in the house often went uh, rotten very quickly before they could use, even though it's fresh and uh, just bought, you know. It became rotten, could not eat. Uh, then many uh, bread, worms and stuff like that. Yes. And even when they give it to the dogs, the dogs didn't want to eat because it smells stinky and terrible, you know, with all the worms uh, swimming in it. Then, also, those who stay inside the house often uh, saw in the lights the lambs or the furniture or the jewelry, you know, thrown all over the, the house, uh, chaotically. So 
more and more, they get fearful, scared. And then, one by one, they, uh, they moved out of that house. And because of their fear, they're so, they're so terrified, and their fear is so great, it uh, also affected other people in the town. <laughs> So they all got together that town and then tried to find out, you know, discussing how to how to get rid of the the ghosts in that house. Mm -hmm.